Hey guys, Robbie Webster here, and this is my March 2010 Blu-ray and DVD update. Sorry this is late, but things at work are real busy right now, um, and I've really had no energy to do one of these. Um, I really want to do one, but every day just felt so tired, and I have the day off today, so I'm just going to do it. I really don't want feel like doing it right now, but I'm just going to do it, and um, I'm going to tell you right now, I have a feeling this is going to be even longer than last month, so there's, there's a lot of stuff to show, so hopefully you'll enjoy it, um, I got some really cool stuff this month, but before we get started, um, I want to talk to you about the contest I'm having right now, if you haven't heard about it, um, you have a chance to win the first thing I'm going to be showing you here in the, the DVD update, I have, I bought two copies of this so that I could give one of them away, and that's The Walking Dead, the first season on Blu-ray, so there you go, you can see that. Um, so if you want a chance to win this, all you have to do is check out my previous video um, and you can either leave a comment or a video response. If you Make sure you watch the video so you know what you have to do in the comment and video response or else you won't get an entry. But if you enter as with a comment, you get one entry and if you enter with a video response, you'll get 10 entries. So definitely if you have the capability, you're going to want to enter with a video response because you'll get a much better chance of winning. But it's not just this that I'm giving away. There's also two other DVD movies, or I mean two other Blu-ray movies, and then there's two DVD movies, and then there's a TV season. And so there's going to be six different prizes, and you have a chance of winning multiple prizes if I draw your name more than once. Um, and so far there's a lot of entries, so thank you to everyone who's entered. But let's just get started on this video, the Blu-ray and DVD update. Um, and obviously the first thing I'm going to show you is, again, The Walking Dead. Um, this was a blind buy. I had never seen it on TV. I actually only have very, very basic cable channels because I, I have so many Blu-rays and DVDs to watch and there's stuff that I can watch on the internet. I really don't feel like spending the money on the cable or satellite because I really wouldn't watch it. And I feel like I'd be wasting my time watching it because... There's a lot of stuff that I own that I want to see so that I can show them in the updates. And also, I just love buying new stuff and watching it. Um, so yeah, there's a look at the cover again. This is an awesome set. Um, this is a great series. There's only six episodes in the first season, but it's awesome. And I'm not even a guy that likes horror or zombies. I'm not big into that at all. Um, there's very few um, horror movies that I even like. It has to have a really good story and has to be done really well in a way that's believable to me, and this is done in that way. Not that I think that that could ever happen, but it's it's like, I don't know, pretty much most movies you watch could never really happen, but it's at least semi-plausible. So I really liked it. Um, if you can get your hands on this, definitely check it out. And if you really want it and you don't have the money, enter my contest. You'll have a chance to win it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. It doesn't take more than two minutes of your time. Um, so yeah, that's that. And... I have one more TV season on Blu-ray. Um, this one I just picked up two days ago. I've already watched I think eight episodes of it because I I didn't I also you know I don't have TV. This is on the same channel. It's another AMC series. It's Mad Men season four, um, and I picked I have the first three seasons as well, but they were on DVD because I used to buy my seasons on DVD to save money, and. This is an absolutely awesome, awesome series, and this season is great, too, so far, on um, the first eight episodes so far. I just finished watching the eighth episode, like, literally right before I sat down to film this, but there's, I still think I have four more left, or I think there's 12, 12 episodes in each season, but the thing that sucks is that I'm going to have to get the first three seasons on Blu-ray because it just, it doesn't, my brain doesn't work that way. I don't want to split between two different formats. I don't know why. It's stupid. But the one thing that, that disappoints me is the the amount of effort and like the like there's a lot more intricate stuff in the packaging of the DVDs. The packaging the DVD package look is so much cooler than this. This is just like it's a plain DVD or a plain Blu-ray case. It has multiple discs and it. it has three discs. There's three spots for them. The second disc obviously is in that player right now, but. If you buy the DVDs, there's so much more to it. That's why I was buying them, because I figured if you're going to spend a ton of money, you might as well get the nice package. But obviously, the picture quality just cannot be beat on Blu-ray, so I had to go with Blu-ray. Especially since the price, everywhere I've seen it, the DVD and the Blu-ray for this one is the same price, which I've never seen before. 
And um, I just wish that they could package these. I know some people want to, there's certain people out there that want to save space. And then there's others that, that want the really intricate stuff. I'm the one that wants the intricate stuff, even though I don't even have the space for it. I eventually would like to have a ton of space, like an entire room of shelves for everything. But um, as of right now, I don't have that. But still, I want to get the, the, the best looking stuff. But once again, all that mat really matters, I guess, is the, the picture quality is fantastic. The menus are awesome. Especially, uh, Walking Dead's menu is great, too. Um, yeah, from now on, I'm buying pretty much everything on Blu-ray. The only thing I'll buy on DVDs is, like, bargain stuff that I find that I've never heard of or never seen. Real cheap stuff. Um, or stuff that just doesn't exist on Blu-ray. So, now, moving on to the Blu-rays. And actually, this month, I have more Blu-rays than DVDs. And that's the first time that that's ever happened. First one I got, this came out last Tuesday. I believe the 29th. Uh, I pre-ordered it on Amazon um, as soon as I heard about it. It's Teen Wolf starring Michael J. Fox. Awesome movie. Absolutely love this movie. Um, all, like a, one of the best films from the 80s and one of my favorite Michael Michael J. Fox. I always want to say Michael Jackson by accident. I'm sorry, guys. If I do say that, I'm sorry. But I love Michael J. Fox. This is one of my favorite films with him in it. And it looks great on Blu-ray. Definitely pick it up. Um, here's the cover. I don't think I showed you the Mad Men cover up close. When I went to Best Buy to get this, they only had one copy with the slipcover on it, and all the rest had no slipcover, so I'm glad that I was able to get one. If I didn't see this in here, I wouldn't have even known that the slipcover existed, and then I would have been mad when I saw it later on. The next one I got, this is one of the Best Picture nominees. It just came out a couple weeks ago. It's The Fighter, starring um, Marky Mark. Mark Wahlberg and Christian Bale, and Christian Bale won Best Supporting Actor for this, and it's a story about, it's a true story about two brothers, um, they were both boxers at one point, but at this point the younger brother is trying to, like, pursue a career in boxing, and his brother is training him, his brother also has an addiction to, I think, cocaine, um, maybe some, something else, maybe heroin, too, I think it's cocaine, but, um, the way that they filmed the actual fights in this, especially one scene in particular, what it's just on it's just I was awestruck by it. It's probably the best filmed boxing film that I've ever seen besides um man, why am I going blank? I always do this. Besides Martin Scorsese's uh film with uh jeez, what's wrong with me right now? <laughs> Come on, what is it? I don't wanna make any cuts in this video, whatever, you know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm um, having a brain fart right now, I watch like 18,000 movies, so I forget ones, even the great ones, um, it was actually just in an update a couple months ago, so, yeah, but this is probably the second best film thing, and this is one film where they show, they show Mark, Mark Wahlberg's character punch, and then his opponent punch back, and the camera just following the punches, and it looks so cool, it was absolutely awesome. Um, this film was awesome. Uh, definitely, definitely check it out. Next one I got is another one of the Best Picture nominees. Unfortunately, I was not able to find a slip cover for this yet. But you know me, I, I can get them. And if I do get it, I'll let you know just so you can see that I, I know how to get them. Um, maybe someday I'll tell you guys how I do that. It's, it's a little dishonest, but um, the way I figure it, the retailers pretty much toss these things around like footballs and destroy all the packaging, so... I gotta do what I can do to get the best packaging, cause that's what that's what I like about my collection. I like keeping everything mint. Um, and that this movie is 127 hours. Um, it's absolutely awesome. It's from the same director as Slumdog Millionaire. It's starring James Franco, and this is another true story. It's about this guy, and I heard about this when I was in like 11th grade. I think it happened in 03. Um, I this guy is like a he's like an adventurer. He's out. Um, mountain climbing and, and doing all kinds of stuff out in the desert and like or in like this national park or something and um he was climbing down through this little crevice and he slipped and fell and this big boulder fell with him and actually the boulder got pinned his hand his like his almost like part way up his forearm up against a rock wall and it was stuck there and he couldn't get it out and I think he was there for like several, I think it was like six days or seven days, he was there for a long time, he only had a very small amount of water, and um, basically you should all know the story, it's, it's been everywhere, but he ended up having to 
to um, cut off his, his arm to get away, and that's how he survived. So this is just the true story of what happened to him. And it's really well done. The cinematography is really cool. Um, and James Franco was a good actor in this. Uh, I was really disappointed with the job he did hosting the Academy Awards. He acted like he didn't care, which I thought was really unprofessional. But I like him as an actor, especially... I, this is a good dramatic role, but his comedy acting, I like the most. Um, like Pineapple Express. Um, the stuff he did in Freaks and Geeks was really good. Um, he's done some other things, too. But I like his comedy better than his dra drama. But this was well done. <sighs> I hope I tried to get the camera angle exactly the same as last month because it was awesome. But I don't know if it's perfect or not. It's never going to be exactly the same from month to month because it's hard. To, I... I I'm gonna have I'm marking the floor so I know where to set up the tripod and everything, but it's a little difficult. Um, this is another new release. This one I I saw it in the theater, but I haven't watched it yet on Blu-ray, and I really like this. I didn't even look. I never heard any reviews of it even to this day, so I don't know what people think about it. But I liked it. It's called The Next Three Days, starring Russell Crowe. There's the cover. It's got a nice slipcase. I got this for sixteen dollars on Target.com. Um, it was actually $23 in the store, but I went on their website and I got it for $16. It was $15.99, which is a really good price for a brand new movie. Um, and this movie is about this guy, um, played by Russell Crowe. Sorry, that's my phone. Hold on a sec. My bad, guys. I totally forgot about that. Should have silenced it. But, um, his, his wife is arrested and charged with murder. And he just can't believe that she would have done something like that. And it's, you can't, throughout the whole movie, you don't know whether she's innocent or guilty um, or anything. Um, that was Kip. But uh, let me just silence this real quick. But, um, so the next three days, oh, Liam Neeson is in this. In the trailers, they made it seem like he had a, like he was the, the next biggest actor. He's only in it for like a few scenes, so he's not a big actor in it. I love Liam Neeson, so that was why I went to see it in the theater, but it's still a good movie. Russell Crowe is awesome, too, um, and basically it's about him trying to get his wife out of prison, um, and he does whatever he can. He fights the system for, I think, a couple years at least, and then he ends up trying to going through with this plan, trying to break her out, and that's what the movie's about, and it, this is really cool. Definitely check it out. Um, I, I think it's great. I thought it was a great action movie. Um, not even that much of an action movie, but just good, just a good film altogether. Um, this next one, I really thought was going to be really, like, bad, and I wasn't going to buy it, but I saw it on sale, I think it was fourteen ninety nine, and it's still a relatively new release, I think three or four weeks old, um, and it's Unstoppable with, um, Chris Pine and Denzel Washington, and it's another true story. Supposedly, it's based on a true story, but I looked up the real true story, and it's almost nothing like it. But anyways, it's about this train that gets away from um, its conductor and or whatever, and it's just going by itself, and it's speeding up, and it's got a lot of hazardous materials on it. And um, Denzel Washington's character and Chris Pine's character try to stop it. And this wasn't anything special. It wasn't that great at all. But it was it was enjoyable to watch. It was good action. Just something to watch if not you don't have to think about it too much. Um, it was only about an hour and a half long, so nothing great. Um, Denzel hasn't been in a in in a lot of good movies recently. A lot of his recent ones I really didn't like. Um, Book of Eli I really didn't like. Um, the the two Pelham one two three didn't like that either. Um, I really haven't seen one that I really liked him in in a while. Um, he he has done tons of good movies though, so I still like him as an actor. But um, yeah, this one's nothing special. The next one I got, oh, you guys are going to be jealous of this. Um, I pre-ordered this, and it was actually sold out. And it took, I didn't get it until a few weeks after, or like at least one week after it came out. Um, and it is a, a double pack, um, a double feature. Uh, Ernest Goes to Jail and Ernest Goes to Camp. And I haven't watched these yet since I got it, so I don't know what they look like on Blu-ray. But, um... I used to I used to love the Ernest films when I was a kid. I know they're really super corny and not very good movies, but it's a nostalgic thing, so that's why I got it. So um, yeah, for those of you Ernest fans, I know you think that's cool. Um, this next one I got, I really really like this. I had never heard of it. Um, I was looking up a a list of. I told you about this in my last update because I watched another film from it, but I looked up this top thirty list of 
best movies you've never seen. And the number two I watched last month, and that was okay. This one was the number one, um, and this was awesome. It's Michael Douglas and Falling Down. I, I know a lot of people have seen it because after I, um, after I watched it, I went and looked up reviews on YouTube, and a lot of my friends here have done reviews or showed it or talked about it at some point. So I know it's probably a pretty popular one. I guess I'm just a little bit behind. This movie is great. It's about this guy who um, he lost his job, and he's just really frustrated with the things that are going on in the country, like all the corruption and stuff. And, like, just um, stuff with immigration and all kinds of different issues. And he keeps going along. He, he basically starts off, he's in a car in a traffic jam. And there's a construction going on. And he's getting all frustrated. He's looking out his window and seeing stuff he doesn't like ha happening. People beeping their horns, talking about all this stupid stuff. And it's making him really mad. So he just gets out of his car and starts walking. Leaves his car right in the middle of the road. Um, and he starts walking. And he as he walks through this area, I think it's in somewhere in Hollywood, but, um, I think that's what they said, I could be wrong, but he starts walking, and he, um, he keeps coming across different situations where people, there's, like, him against, it's, like, him versus someone else that's doing something he doesn't like, and he calls him out on it, and every time he comes into one of these situations, it's, like, he gets a weapon, he starts off by getting this bat, and then the next time he comes into confrontation, he gets a better weapon, and a better weapon, and a better weapon, it's, like, just, it's funny, it's good and it's true, like a lot of the stuff that's going on, it's stuff that happens, it's just messed up in this country. Um, people don't know what this country was all about, um, even our history books, and I know people, a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but our history books, they give references to other history books. Why aren't the references to the original source documents? Why aren't we reading books written by the Founding Fathers, instead of reading them books written by people who are writing about them, who can take whatever interpretation they want and change it into anything. Um, that's all I have to say on that. I know it's a real controversial issue, and this is a DVD update. It's not a historical debate, so I'll just stick to this. This is a good movie. Definitely pick it up. I think it's only $10 on Amazon.com, so definitely grab that. Next one I got, this is a from, I think, 1963, and that's the year my father was actually born. I think it's 1963. Might be 64. But it's Paul Newman and Cool Hand Luke. And this was another one I got for $10 on Amazon. And this is about this guy who is locked up in this chain gang prison. Uh, every day the prisoners have to go out and work in this these, these real harsh conditions. Real hard back-breaking labor. And it just shows all about how this guy came in. Um, probably by Paul Newman. And he, he basically just fought against the system, I guess. And... Definitely cool movie to check out. Um, really liked it. I'm really getting into Paul Newman films lately, too. This next one is one of my all-time favorites. I showed this in my uh, favorite Tom Hanks video. Um, so you guys know I had this, but I had never put it in the update yet. So here it is. It's Big, starring Tom Hanks. Um, great movie. I love this movie so much. I watched it with my, my wife got to watch it for the first time with me. And then the very next day... It was on in the break room, so I watched like another half hour of it on my lunch break. Uh, but yeah, it's awesome. It's about this kid who makes a wish that he can, that he was big because he um, was at a carnival and they wouldn't let him on a ride and he was embarrassed in front of a girl that he likes. So the next morning he wakes up and he's a grown up. Um, and it's just so funny, so well done. At, Tom Hanks' acting is phenomenal in this. He was nominated for his first best actor. Um, Academy Award, and he didn't win, but he, but shortly after, a few years later, he won his first one. But this is an awesome film, very well done, and it looks great on Blu-ray. Uh, the next one I got, this one I saw for the first time when I bought it, um, it's The Fly, um, and I'm trying to remember the name of the actor, I always forget it, Jeff Goldblum, it stars Jeff Goldblum, it's about this guy who builds this teleporter, and you might have seen the spoof in Simpsons, here's the cover real quick might have seen the spoof of this in The Simpsons, um, and he, he goes in, it's this teleporter, just these two pods that are like 15 feet apart, and it can transfer material from one to the other, just like on Star Trek, and, um, he tests it out on himself, but the first time he tests it, um, a fly actually gets in it, so gradually over time, after he transported himself, he starts to turn into this fly-human hybrid, and so it's, it's, it's pretty good, um, I, I, I liked it, I thought it was decent. And that's another one I got for 10 bucks on Amazon. The next one I got, 
I got this for six dollars at my Best Buy because they're we have like within like a twenty minute driving distance. There's probably ten Blockbuster stores, and only one of them is closing right now. It's the first one that I've seen close in Rochester, and I know they're closing down a lot of stores. This one was six dollars used. And I put it in a new Blu-ray case because I bought a, I bought 50 Blu-ray cases so that I can buy used ones and replace the cases. Um, but this is The Soloist starring Robert Downey Jr. and Jamie Foxx. It's about this homeless man. He's a violinist and he's just like an amazing musician. And Robert Downey Jr. is this writer. And he decides to start writing an article about this guy's life. And I, I know I talked about this when I got the DVD back when it first came out. So this is a really good film. So definitely check it out. Here's the cover. Yeah, definitely check this out. <clears throat> um, the next one I got, um, this was okay. I, I mean, it was good and everything. It, I just, I guess I was hoping for it to be even better. I, I think I had my hopes set too high. But for some reason, this Blu-ray case is a little dinged up. I don't know why. It's the way it came to me. Um, it's Flags of Our Fathers, um, directed by Clint Eastwood. And this is basically the story of the people who were, were recorded in that famous photograph of the men, um, I think it's at Iwo Jima or Okinawa, I don't, I should know that, but they were raising the American flag and they took that famous picture where they show the guys, there's like a monument to it and everything, and this is about their lives and how they ended up touring the country trying to sell war bonds and just shows everything that happened to them, and it was, it was well done, I really liked it, um, it's not really a, a war movie, it, it shows war in it, but it's not like focus all on the war like certain movies are. So there's the cover right there. Um, the next one I got, I can't believe I have so many Blu-rays. I still have two more to show you. Um, this one I just reviewed a couple, couple months ago when I got it on DVD. And it was recently released on Blu-ray, so I picked it up for, I think, $7.99. It's Clint Eastwood starring in Pale Rider. And this was really good. I really like this film. Here's the cover. And I'll just talk about this real quickly. It's about this guy they call, um, he's like a reverend, he's he, he's a pastor or something, and he comes riding into town uh, in this gold mining town um, where these people are kind of getting driven out of the of the place where they live, where they settle down. And um, they're getting driven out by these people who are doing violent things to them. And um, he just comes along and basically starts to help them. And he really kicks butt in this movie. It's a great Clint Eastwood film. Definitely check it out. I think it's from like 1983. So it's not like super old. Oh, it's from 1985. Yeah, so it's only um, 26 years old. So that's not that old. For mo He's done a lot of movies. So uh, The next one I got is another one. Oh, shoot. This one's got a messed up Blu-ray case too. That's annoying. I hate that. Um, but this one I watched and I showed an update when I got it on DVD. Um, it's James Conn and Kathy Bates in Misery. It's a Stephen King movie. Um, it's about this guy. He's a writer. He writes these romance stories. Here's a cover real quick. This is another $10 one. Um, he writes these romance novels, and he ends up getting in a car accident. Um, and Just because it's it's a weather-related car accident, so he goes off the road. And um, Kathy Bates' character, she finds him in his car, and he's all messed up. And uh, she takes him into her home, and turns out that she's like this psychopath that's a fan of his and he has like the copy of the the newest book that he's writing he has he has like the, he hasn't published it yet but he has it in his briefcase and she reads it and she finds out that he's killing off like the main character and like ending it so she's like pissed off and she starts to torture him and stuff and make him rewrite it it's just crazy uh it's not that long it's like i think it's like an hour and a half long a little over an hour and a half, um, but I really like it. I thought it was well done. Kathy Bates, I think, was nominated for Best Actress for this. So, yeah, check that out. Now, that's it for the Blu-rays, and now I'm going to move on to the DVD series, TV series, and I got some really cool stuff from that I used to love when I was a kid. The first ones I got are the first three volumes of the Animaniacs. So there's the first volume. There's the second volume, and there's the third volume. And these are made. These were um, produced by Steven Spielberg. If you see on the back of this one, there's actually an animated picture of Steven Spielberg with the, he's wearing an ET hat and he's holding the Animaniacs. And these guys, 
are, they call them, the, they're dogs. They call them the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister. Dot. Um, it's Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. And I used to love this cartoon when I was a kid. It was on in the early 90s, mid-90s. Um, it was really funny, real crazy. It had, now that I watch it as I'm older, it had a lot of adult, like, oriented humor. Like, uh, and it's not anything bad, but it's just stuff that would be, the kids would have enough wacky stuff to keep them, like, entertained like I did when I was a kid. Now that I'm older, it's got all kinds of funny jokes in it. They just would go right over the kids' heads. Um, really well done, well written. Um, uh, they, these aren't, I think, the, I think with these three volumes, I have 99 episodes of the show, and it's not everything. I think they're, they need to release another volume to finish it up, but it's been a while, so I don't know if they will ever release it. I think these came out in 05, so I don't know if they're going to, but hopefully someday they do. The next one I got, this one I like even better than Animaniacs, is actually a spinoff of Animaniacs, and um, it's the the first three volumes, well actually it's the whole series, it's another, I think it's like another like hundred and something episodes, um, it's Pinky and the Brain, so there's volume one, um, volume two, and volume three, I hope I did those in the right order, nope that's volume two. I showed you volume three before. So here's volume three. But th this is a great show. It's this spinoff. There was this little, um, there was like all kinds of different little bits in the Animaniacs cartoon. And one of the bits was, um, Pinky and the Brain. They were these two lab mice. One of them is extremely intelligent and one of them is like crazy. He's like all w wacky and stuff. Um, and Pinky, his name's Pinky and the Brain obviously is the smart one. It's like they took all of the smartness from both mice and put it into one mice and put all the dumbness into the other one. And it's really funny. And basically, the brain always wants to take over the world. So every episode, he's coming up with this new scheme to try to take over the world. And they do, like, stuff back in time. Like, um, for some reason, they'll be back, like, in the 1500s and trying to take over the world back then. And then they'll be back in present day or in the future or all kinds of stuff. I think at the end, they actually changed it because... Stupid producers, people at um, WB or wherever it was, the studio, they wanted them to change things for some reason. And I remember the writers were really upset about it. And um, at the end, they changed it from to Pinky and the Brain and Elmira. Elmira being from Tiny Toon Adventures. And I didn't really like those as much, but they were still funny. But it was just annoying. I don't know why people always have to mess with stuff. Especially if there's nothing wrong with it. But anyways... That's those, and I have one more TV season to show you. Um, I think about almost a year ago, I got the first two seasons. There's three seasons, but I got the first two of The Greatest American Hero, which is a classic show I used to like about this guy who becomes a superhero. And um, I've been trying to get the third season ever since then, but I can't find it for a good price. It's like out of print, so it's real expensive online for some reason. But the other day I went to FYE and I found all three seasons together in one set for $10. So I picked it up. So now I don't need the third volume anymore. Maybe I'll give away or, or sell the other two. But here's the entire set, all three seasons, the complete series. Um, this is, I, I don't, Mill Creek Entertainment makes these. And Mill Creek makes like these really cheap releases. Um, so I'm not really happy with the packaging. If you look inside, it's just a bunch of these little cases like this with each disc in it. But it's okay because it looks all right on the DVD. There's nothing wrong with it. And now I own every episode. So that's real cool. And it was only $10 to own every episode of one of my favorite series. So that's awesome. Um, now on to the DVD movies. And I've got some pretty good ones. The first one is called Papillon. It's starring Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman. Uh, that's an awesome com combination of actors. Uh, there's a cover right there. Um, basically, these two guys are in this French prison, and it's like a, a prison that's supposed to be impossible to escape from, and um, basically Steve McQueen's character keeps trying to escape, and you get you get put into solitary confinement for like years and years, like 10 years or something, so he got put into solitary confinement a couple times, and like all this crap kept happening. Um, he, he really had a tough time in this movie, um, so it's, it's kind of sad sometimes, but it's really well done. Um, Steve McQueen was awesome in this. Definitely check it out. One of his best movies. Uh, the next one I got, I can't believe this one. It feels like forever ago since I watched this. This was the first one I watched for this update. 
It's Robin, Robin, Robert De Niro and Robin Williams in Awakenings. And this is a true story. There's the cover. It's about Robin Williams' character is this doctor um, uh, who works with these patients who are comatose. They've been in vegetative state for like since they were since they were just kids, and now they're like adults, and um, they've been in this vegetative state. And he starts experimenting with this drug, um, and he ends up like waking them up, like all of them, waking all of them up from their comas, and they just start living their lives um, as if nothing ever happened. It's it's crazy. Um, you have to watch the whole the movie to hear the whole story. It is kind of sad, especially at the end. I was really sad, but really well done. I think Robin. Will I think this was nominated for either a best a best. I think it was nominated for best picture, and I think um. Let me see on the back. Yeah, Robert De Niro was nominated for best actor, and I I don't really like Robert De Niro that much. I like him, but he's not like one of my favorite actors. But I think this was one of his best acting jobs. It was really well done. I loved it. The next one I got, no, oh, another Robin Williams film. Um, this was really good too. It's Dead Poet Society. Um, it's about these, this this um, professor who has like he has like a different way of teaching things, and um, he doesn't really mesh with all of the other professors at the school. It's like a private school uh, for kids that are really, really um, like they're all supposed like they all want to graduate and go to like the um, the Ivy League colleges and stuff. And um, basically, he's an English teacher, and he's just teaching them in this new way, getting them to think in a different way. And it's just a great drama movie. Um, definitely check that one out. I think I think it was nominated for Best Actor, too, but I could be wrong. This next one I got, I didn't know what I was going to think of this, but it was freaking awesome. The music was awesome. I loved it. Loved everything about it. Three hours long, though. A little tough to sit through, but the, it's funny. It's dramatic. Um, and it's got great music. It's a musical. It's Fiddler on the Roof. Um, uh, this one is, it says it's an uh, Oscar winner, but I don't know which awards it won. I'm assuming it had some best original scores in it. But, yeah, this one's awesome film. It's about these people in Tsarist Russia. Um, the main character, he has all these daughters, and they're all coming to him one at a time, wanting to get married, and each time they're a little more, like, it's like their way, the ways that everyone does things are changing. Um, so it's just, it's really good. I really liked it. Uh, the next one I got, this one I've been wanting to see ever since, um, ever since it came out because it, uh, Forrest Whitaker won the best actor for it. And I, I was wondering what it was like because I, I didn't even know anything about it or what it was going to be about. It's called The Last King of Scotland. And Forrest Whitaker plays like this dictator of, uh, I don't even know what the name of the country is. I have to look it up. It's a, it's obviously an African country. Um, but yeah, he, he's this dictator. And he basically... who else, What's the other guy's name that's in it? It's Professor X from the new movie. James McAvoy. Um, is like this doctor. And the, the dictator like meets him. And they kind of build this friendship. And he, he seems like he's this really great guy. Even though he's not. You find out he's not. Um, and he gets, he wants the doctor to be his personal doctor, and it's a really crazy movie. Um, Forrest Whitaker's acting in this was awesome. I mean, I didn't, before I had seen this, the only thing I seen him in is, like, really crappy movies, or, like, the, I think he hosted either The Twilight Zone or The Outer Limits, like, the new version. I think it was The Twilight Zone. So that's all I had seen him in, and I, I would never expect him to be such a great actor in this. This was an awesome movie. Definitely check it out. Here's the cover. Um, next one I got. This one was just okay. This was actually the most recent thing I watched, I think. It's um, Viggo Mortensen in the movie Good. And it's about this guy. Um, he lived in Germany. And um, uh, he, back during like the World War II era. And um, he had written this paper about... It was just a fictional story, I think, about, like, putting, like, putting someone out of their misery. Like, if they had this terminal disease and they were in pain, um, just putting them to sleep, letting them pass away. Um, and that's what, it was a fictional story about it. And basically, once the Nazi regime came into place, um, they found this book and they wanted to use it for their own purposes. So they went to him and got him to join the Nazi party. He really... 
he was a good man. Um, he didn't really want to have anything to do with them, but he felt like he had no choice. And basically he didn't do anything and he ended up causing a lot of bad stuff to happen because of it. And it's just a, it's a, it's a pretty good movie. It's not anything great. It's kind of hard to watch just because that whole thing, that whole, everything that happened in Nazi Germany was just so messed up. But it, it's worth watching if you're, especially if you're into World War Two stuff like I am. It's, it's good. Um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> There's the cover. Um, that's another one I bought for $3 at the Blockbuster that's closing. The next one I got is another Steve McQueen film um, with Paul Newman in it as well. It, it's kind of cheesy, but it was it, back when it came out, and these effects in this were awesome. It's called The Towering Inferno, and it's really good. And you know who else is in it? O.J. Simpson. So you know it's got to be good, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like this. It was pretty good. It's about... These people build the tallest skyscraper in the world, and um, when it's first built, they find out that this guy was, like, trying to save money by using cheap materials and taking shortcuts, and, uh, and because of this, a fire ends up breaking out and ends up turning into this big crisis, so they're trying to, like, get everybody out of the building, and that's what the whole movie's about. Um, pretty cool suspense movie. I liked it. Next one I got, this one, I don't know if, if people are going to agree with me or not, but I didn't like it. Um... I didn't like it very much at all. It's uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. I thought it was okay, but it was kind of hard for me to watch. I don't know. I didn't like it that much. I don't. I, it's hard to explain. Uh, it's starring George Clooney, um, Drew Barrymore, and Sam Rockwell is like the main guy. It's about this guy who was a television like. Pro, I guess he's a producer, and he used to. Um, he made like a lot of famous game shows, like uh, I think the dating game he made, and some other stuff, and. At the same time, he wrote this book, I guess, and he claimed that at the same time as he was making these these game shows, he was being recruited by, I think, the CIA to be a secret agent, like a spy, and he was going on missions, like, he would be taking people on trips that they had won on the game show, and at the same time going on some missions, like secret missions, so they, I thought it could have they could have done things differently, that I, and I would have liked it more, but I understand that other people like it more than I would, um... I think one thing that bothered me, I had a lot of sexual content in it, and I didn't like that. Uh, I, I don't think there was any nudity in it, but I could be wrong. But still, I it, that's why I didn't like it, I think. The last one I got. This movie was really boring. Really, really boring. It's Casey Affleck and Matt Damon in Jerry. It's about these two guys that basically just start walking through the desert. They go to this national park and start taking a walk. They end up getting lost after like a half an hour and they end up out there for like a long, long, long time. There's like scenes in this movie where they show them walking. Just walk. You just see the sides of their heads and they're walking for seriously like 10 minutes long. Three different times during the movie, I fast forwarded through the scene and I was fast forwarding forever and it was like still boring just to watch it fast forwarding through it. But the scenery is beautiful and um, I wouldn't say it's not worth watching. Uh, you can get it for like three dollars on eBay. There's like a million of them on there for three bucks with free shipping. So yeah, it was worth that. But it's from the the director of Finding Forrester and Goodwill Hunting. So that's the reason why I got this. I was looking up other movies that 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 guy directed. I was also looking up movies that Matt Damon was in that I hadn't seen. So that might be why I got it. But anyways, that was the last one. Um, I don't know how long this was. It actually felt like I got through it faster than I would have. But I, there were more titles than last month. But anyways, I hope you guys like my uh, Mr. Rogers shirt. This is a shirt I like to sleep in. It's got a hole in the armpit. So as you all know, you can all tell it, I dress up for these, dress nicely for these. I just didn't want to wear my hoodie and my winter hat again like I did the last two times. As you can see, my hair is getting pretty long. I was growing it out. Um, it is getting a little annoying because I've been playing a lot of basketball lately and you have to find something to do with it so that it doesn't go on your face when you're playing. But I like getting, I like growing my hair out long every once in a while. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that, this update. I hope you're all having a good, a good start to your spring. I'm um, looking forward to the good weather, and I hope you're all watching good movies. Um, like I, I always welcome people to recommend films to me if I, that I haven't seen. I, as you know, I'm not really into horror, but if you've seen stuff that's like dramatic, anything, uh, even if it's horror, if it has a good story to it. I like it. If anything that you th that you like, I want to check out. That's the whole point of the contest I'm having. I actually have a list of 36 movies that 
that people named in the contest that I haven't seen. And I haven't even checked all the... I haven't even been able to watch all of the videos yet. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty cool. I'm looking forward. I have this huge list of movies I've never seen that I want to watch. And I'm always adding to it. So, always be telling me about stuff. Um, thanks so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you when I see you.